So today we will continue with this Sheldon Edenberg's book, Option Volatility and Pricing, third chapter, Context Specifications and Option Terminologies. In previous session, we have touched a little bit on this topic and in this session, we will continue with that. So I'll quickly revise the few topics, few important topics, because I would say this video and the next part will be the most important topics. Because if you don't understand the terminologies, then it might harm you. So you have to have an absolute clarity in all the option terminologies, right? So I will quickly revise all those things and we'll continue with the advanced topics. And I can promise that nothing is complex. You just have to put your focus and everything becomes easier. Because only the names are complex and difficult, the real concept is very easy. So let's get started. So what are options? Options are financial derivatives, which gives the buyer an option, not the obligation. Again, which gives the buyer an option, not the obligation to buy or sell any underlying asset at a specific price for a certain period, or we can say on a specific date. So let's write it. So what are options? Which gives the buyer the right to buy or sell any underlying asset. And we can say for a specific price and certain period. So there are three things to keep in mind that options are financial derivatives first second that gives the right to the buyer only right not the obligation right first derivatives second they gives the right for a specific rate and for a specific time derivatives right specific rate and certain period there are only four things so what are derivatives so when we talk about the literal meaning or we can say the little meaning in linguistic, we can say a derivative is a word which is formed from any another word or base. Means if there is no base, then there will be no derivatives. Let's say the happiness is coming from the happy. So if there is no happy word, the happiness doesn't mean anything. Similarly, when we talk about derivatives, derivative means in financial field is that it is deriving its value from something else. So let's take a real life example first. For example, there is a new movie releasing on Friday. The movie name is Spider-Man and you want to buy a ticket for the Spider-Man movie. So the movie ticket of the Spider-Man movie is deriving its value from the movie itself, right? If there is no movie, then there will be no value of that ticket, the specific movie ticket. So we can say the underlying here is the movie and based on that, the movie ticket is deriving its value. If the movie is very good, there might be a possibility that the ticket prices will be higher. If the movie is not good, then there might be a possibility that the ticket prices will be lower, right? Means it is deriving its value from the underlying asset and the underlying asset is the, the movie itself. Now let's understand the types of options. So there are basically two types of options that is, A call option or a put option. That's it. So now let's again take the example of the movie ticket. For example, the movie is releasing on Friday and you know that the movie is absolutely awesome, right? Because you have seen the previous parts and the response of audience was absolutely awesome. Means you are thinking that there is a possibility that after releasing on Friday, the ticket prices may go higher on the weekends, maybe on Saturday, on Sunday. So let's say when it is releasing on Friday, the ticket prices are $100. And you are expecting that the ticket prices may go higher on the weekends. So it might go higher than 100 means you are bullish, means you are thinking that the price of the ticket may go higher, means you are bullish, means what you will do, you will buy and call option at the price of $100. Now the ticket price is $100, but you are buying a call option. So let's say at the price of $10, you are buying the call option. So this is the ticket price and this is the option price or in trading terms, you can say this is the premium. 
to buy the core option at the price 100. Now, if the price increases on weekends, let's say on Sunday, it becomes 120, then you can exercise your right. Because what is option? It is giving you a right to buy an option, right? Not the obligation. If you want, you can buy, no problem. If you don't want, you can just leave it, no problem. But if you have the right, then seller has the obligation and you have the right. If you ask the seller that today's price is 120, but I bought a right at the price of $100 and I gave you a $10 premium. So the seller has to give you at the price of 100 and current price is 120 and you have given a premium of 10 means what will be your profit? Current price is 120, right? You bought at the price of 100, which is known as the strike price and you gave a premium of $10, right? Premium. And this is also the current price is also known as the exercise price. So your profit becomes $10. Similarly, when we talk about the put option, so let's take another scenario. The movie is releasing on Friday and you know that on weekends there is a countrywide strikes or in India we say it's Bharat Band means the whole India will be shut down. Unfortunately, it happens sometime. But and you know that definitely there will be some disruptions in the service industries so it will definitely affect the cinemas theaters means the price may go lower so on friday the price is 100 but you are expecting that due to the countrywide strikes the price may go up to 80 right you don't know but you are speculating and that is what the trading is nobody knows what will be the price everybody is speculating now when you're thinking the price will go down if you buy any option here that will be known as the put option so same case you buy a put option at the price of hundred dollars and for that buy you are paying a premium of ten dollars if on weekends if the price goes to 80 then what you can do you can still sell the ticket at the price of hundred dollars because you have the right to sell that option and the seller has to give you that right because even if the market price is uh, 80 you can execute that order at the 100 means what will happen here you bought at 100 right means it is known as the strike price then you are selling at 80 means this is known as the exercise price and you have given a premium of 10 dollars so your profit will be 10 dollars and that is known as the put option. So that is what I tried my best to give you a real life example of call option and put option. And trading is also derived from the real life only. In the earlier times, there was no stock exchanges or the electronic exchanges. That time, everything happens like in physical life. You are giving something and you are receiving something in return. So that was only the trading in those times. So what we have learned so far, we have learned about the option we have learned about the derivatives. We have learned about the underlying. We have learned about the call option and we have learned about the put option so far. For the bookish definition you need and you can download the PDF from the Telegram channel. Okay, so as we are the quant trader, so I'll show you the prices in Python. So if you can see on the screen, this is the contract symbol, which is expiring on 19th of July, 24. And you can see here last traded date, the strike price, the last price, the bid and ask change, percentage change, volume, open interest and implied volatility. We will understand all these terms shortly and these are very easy. Just the name is scary, but everything is very easy. So please don't get scared from these terms. I'm just showing you that how we can import the option data in Python, right? Similarly, if I want to print the puts for that, I'll just, uh, comment the calls and you can see here we have the data for put options okay let me show you the same thing in yahoo finance uh, the gui if you can see on the screen this is the gui graphical user interface right so this is the same data which we imported in the python like right? the contract name the last trade date the strike price last price bid uh, ask the implied volatility and everything we will understand this option chain in upcoming videos okay so let's proceed to the next uh, topic we will build up brick by brick and you will understand everything for sure okay so let's take an example from the trading only option trading 
Okay, let's say the current market price of Apple is $200. So now you have two options. Either you can go for a call option or you can go for a put option. Okay, so let's first take the scenario of the call option. So first of all, when you buy the call option, when you are bullish, when you know the price of this particular underlying can go up. Okay, so let's say if you buy the call option for the Apple at the 200, so your strike price is 200, right? At the premium of $10 and you are bullish. So even if you are bullish, the market will not run according to your emotions, right? According to your thoughts. So market can go anywhere. It can go down, it can go up based on the environmental conditions, right? Based on the uh, like situations, the demographic situations, the financial situations of country, or there may be any uncertain events. There may be any unpredictable events. So what are the possible outcomes after you buy a call option? So let's explore those one by one. Let's say if you buy the call option and the expiration date is 30 days. So what is the possible outcomes? The first one is, so let's say you bought it today and on the expiry after 30 days, the price is $150. Now what will happen for the simplification, what we'll do, we will just consider that whatever the price increases, that will be your benefit. Let's say if the price increased from 200 to 300, then you will be getting 100. Means for each $1 increase in the underlying asset, you will be getting a $1. For this simplicity but in real life it doesn't happen it always uh, fluctuates so if the price after 30 days is 150 of the underlying asset apple so what you will get first of all you bought the call option at 200 the current price is 150 means the exercise price and you paid a premium of ten dollars so your pnl will be 150 minus 200 minus ten dollars and it will be minus sixty dollars now what will happen with the option seller he will get the ten dollar premium and the fifty dollar profit so means he will be in the profit of sixty dollars second scenario is on the expiration day the price remains same which is 200 let me write it this is the first scenario this is second scenario so in second scenario the price remains 200 so now what will happen the current price is 200 you bought at the price of 200 and you gave a premium of 10 dollars means it will be negative 10 so you are still in loss of the 10 dollar premium now what will happen with the option seller he will be in benefit of 10 dollars so means we can conclude that whenever a uh, option trade happens so the option seller becomes into the profit of the, the amount of premium the, and the option buyer has the loss of the premium amount. In the third case, let's say the current price is 250. So now what will happen? Now we can calculate that the current price is 250 and you bought at 200 and you gave a premium of $10 means it will be plus 40. Correct? So these are the basic possible scenarios which can happen after you go for a call option, right? Similarly, when we talk about the put option, let's say this is put and there are also possible three outcomes. So you bought at the price of 200 and you, you are bearish, right? 200 was the strike price and you are bearish, right? So let's say after 30 days, what happens? the price becomes 150 so now as you're bearish so what will happen the current price is 150 you bought at 200 the current price is 150 and the premium you gave is 10 so you will get a benefit of 40 dollars the second scenario possible is the current price is 200 means there is no movement so 200 minus 200 minus 10 you will be in loss of 10 dollars Right. third scenario is means the price might go against you so let's say it is 250 so you bought at 200 the current price is 250 and you gave a premium of 10 
so it will be negative 60 so you will be in loss of 60 dollars 50 for the price and 10 for the premium so this is what happens when you buy a call and a put option and hopefully it's clear and still if you have any doubt please let me know in the comments we can discuss that again and for this pdf you can download this from the uh, telegram channel